I want to take a question that was in the forums, possibly in the email about the World Series of Poker and also about um, some of the logistics of bringing money to the World Series. And, and I want to cover the logistics of bringing money to the World Series first. It's a question that I will commonly get. And then we'll talk about what events I actually think, you know, have a lot of value if you're a first timer going to the World Series. So one of the things, obviously, the World Series, if you're going there for a long period of time, they do have safety deposit boxes. They're quite expensive, actually. Like, you have to put a deposit down and you have to pay, I want to say it's $150 for the entire summer that you don't get back for the smallest box. And then it goes up and up and up to like 200 for a large box. They don't do electronic players banks there. I've been going to the World Series for 15 or 16 years. I've been going every single year since it started at the Rio, since 2005. This particular summer coming up in 2020, I'm actually not going for the whole time, which I'm actually looking quite forward to not going for the whole time because I've been in Vegas every single summer. But what I will say is I usually do get a box because I'm playing high stakes cash and I'm playing a lot of tournaments. I like to keep my chips in there. Of course, we had Joey Sal like last week talking about how he got robbed outside of the World Series uh, when he was walking away last summer. It's pretty sketchy out there, to be perfectly honest with you. If you play high stakes cash and you walk outside in the parking lot in the middle of the night, the secure there is very little security out there. And uh, people rob banks and rob 7-Elevens and rob convenience stores for less. You know, if you're a guy and people think and they're scoping you out and, you, you know, they think that you've got 10 grand on you, people will kill you for 10 grand for sure if they go in and rob a bank for 800 bucks. So... If you're playing high stakes cash, I would recommend getting a security box. One of the things a lot of people don't know, and I think this is the easiest way to get money to the World Series, especially if you're playing in some larger buy-in events, or even if you're just playing in the main event and you don't want to bring cash to the World Series, the easiest way to get money to the World Series is if you are a part, if you're a customer of a major bank, like I, I bank with Chase, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Chase, all of those banks are represented in, in the Las Vegas area. You can go to the local branch uh, of that bank at the world in Las Vegas, or you can go to your local branch at home and you can get a certified check made out to the World Series of Poker. So this is like a cashier's check, a certified check. Any bank will do this. You go in with whatever account that you want and you say, hey, I want a certified check. They will print out an official certified check with the payee out to the World Series of Poker. And you can bring that into the cage at the World Series of Poker. It will take maybe, depending on when you bring it, half the day to verify it, maybe three to six hours to verify it on a weekday. And they will give you chips for that check. Uh, it doesn't, I, don't, I don't think it matters if you're going to play tournaments or cash games but they will give you chips for that check. Now, they're very, very strict about the 5K Rio chips or the 1Ks. It's not like you can take out 5Ks in that method and give it to someone to pay off a debt. That person is not going to be able to cash in the 5Ks. They keep very, very close track of all those chips. But I feel like that's the most convenient and efficient way to bring money to Las Vegas is either going to a Las Vegas bank in the banking chain that you're in getting a certified check or going at home and getting a certified check. It can be made out to the World Series of Poker or it also can be made out to yourself. Now, the thing about certified checks is, is that if you lose that check, you basically, uh, you don't lose all of the money, but you should treat it like cash. With Chase, I want to say you have to like wait a certain period of time to get the money back into your account, or you have to pay some pretty large fee to cancel the check. So you want, you have to, this is not like a personal check. You want to treat that check as cash. It's not like if you lose it, somebody else can cash it in if the pay in the payee is in your name or the world's Series of poker, but it's going to be a hassle to get your money back. If you lose that check, if you don't end up using the check though, you can bring it back to your bank and that money will go right back into your account. So that's the most efficient way. There are also ways where you can wire money into uh, 
the World Series of Poker, like uh, I, there are some wiring instructions. I don't know why you would do that. I've heard headaches about that. Like you have to get the right account number, the right instructions, wiring um, costs a fee usually. Then you have to deal with the tournament cage. I don't know why anybody would wire money when you can bring a cashier's check right to the cage basically uh, and, and do that. Now, if you want to bring cash to the World Series, obviously you can do that too. And I'm just talking about logistically, physically. I've, I have done this before. If you're on a domestic flight, there are no regulations about how much cash you can have on you. Now, remember, internationally, when you cross over the border, you must claim over $10,000 that you're carrying in U.S. funds uh, coming back into the U.S. And if you don't and they find it on you, they can confiscate you. And of course, we had that story from many years ago, and the podcast is up on Crush Live Poker. It's in a free podcast, actually, in the free podcast area of Crush Live Poker, free bonus material, where there was a group that went to the PCA in the Bahamas. And this was a sort of a weird thing where American immigration was already set up in Nassau. You'll see this sometimes coming from countries that Americans will commonly visit you clear American immigrations in the Bahamas. Well, I don't know if these guys had split up the mo their money, but they did not claim the money correctly. Like one guy had 6,000, one guy had 7,000. They asked them, were they carrying more than 10,000 together? I think they might've said no, something like that. And basically what ended up happening is that U.S. immigration handed them over to the local authorities and they were thrown in jail in the Bahamas, in Nassau. If you're not familiar with the Bahamas, in Nassau and the Bahamas locally, it's like a third world country. It was a traumatic experience for them. Now, I'm not saying that that's always going to happen coming back into the U.S., obviously from a different country, but in a domestic sense, you can carry any amount of money that you want. One of the things that I've figured out is, is that if you take $10,000 in cash and you wrap it, you bend it, and you wrap it in an elastic band, you know, like one of these things, and make a little C, you can do that with $20,000, meaning that you can do two wraps of 10K, fold it in half, wrap it again with a larger elastic, and that's one sort of 20K brick, and you can do it, obviously, with another 20K brick, and in my regular jeans, I can carry $40,000 quite easily in two 20K bricks. Now, I have TSA PreCheck, so I don't have to go through the full body scanners. It's just a metal detector. So I don't even take my cash out of my pockets. It doesn't do anything with the alarms because it's a metal detector. Uh, I think in the full body screen, you have to take everything out of your pockets. So what I would probably do is just stick that money in the front pocket of a carry-on, watch the carry-on go through, obviously go through there and, and grab it there. That's the easiest way. When you start getting into larger, I mean, I know people that have stuck like $100,000 in their carry-on, stick it through. I'm not super comfortable doing that. I like to have it on my person. And to be honest with you, if I didn't have TSA pre-check, even I still feel a little iffy about putting it in the bag and having it go through, you know, the metal detector. But yeah, that's a quite a, like a logistical way of doing that. Um, I have done some stupid shit in the past where a few years ago, maybe five, six years ago, like I've driven with way too much cash back from Las Vegas to LA, like a bag full of cash. There was one year where I stuck around and I played some blackjack at Caesars. I think this was in 2013 or 2014. And uh, I went on a little run and I had a lot of cash. Now, it's not that I'm concerned that someone's going to rob me. My mother always gets super paranoid when I go home and I might have, say, like $8,000 on my person, she's like, oh my God, what if somebody, you know, what if somebody robbed you? When you look at it and you walk out like in regular society, nobody's carrying that amount of cash. So unless somebody specifically knows that you have that amount of cash on them, no one's going to know. They're never going to know that you're carrying that amount of cash to like single you out and rob you, right? This is why people are robbed when they come back from the casinos because people know they have that cash. You're walking out of the casino. They've probably sort of scoped you out. Or if you have a big mouth and you're talking and people are going to know that you're going to have a lot of cash with you driving back to LA and you're telling people when you're going to leave and they know your car, that's another thing. But I was very, very careful 
to keep that quiet. Where the danger comes in with driving to and from Vegas with a lot of cash, if you're driving in your car, actually, I'm more concerned about the police and civil forfeiture. Now, at least now, like it's sort of come out in the news that civil forfeiture is a bad thing, but there have been multiple stories where somebody's gotten pulled over, given permission somehow to for a, a cop to search their car. The cop finds 50000 finds 100000 in a bag, and they just take it. And the onus is on you, basically, to get it back. Now, what do I think about civil forfeiture? I think it's obviously a terrible thing. I think it's corrupt. I think a lot of local authorities... That's in local towns and stuff like that. That's where they've been getting a lot of their annual budget from these civil forfeitures. When you take a step back and you look at it, I can understand where it comes from. Because besides being like a poker player, if you're a cop and you for somehow search somebody's car or something like that, and you randomly find $100,000 in the car, how often do you think that that cash is legitimate? It's probably illegitimate like 95% of the time, right? It's probably drug money, if not more. So even though you're totally innocent, I can sort of see their side of it with that approach that you're going to be basically guilty until you can prove that you're innocent, even though our system doesn't work that way. And that's just a, a function of the fact that pretty much everybody else with that amount of cash is doing something illegal. So... As a poker player, when we're not doing something illegal, we have to be smart about it and not put ourselves into that position. And like I said, I put myself into that position, and I think it was very, very stupid to do so. So I'm not concerned about somebody robbing me in the general public, but driving around with that amount of cash I'm concerned about. There's a couple stories about some corrupt cops actually getting like a call from, I think it was from a casino, from the tournament, somebody that was at the casino telling the cops that these guys were going to be rolling through the Midwest with all this money that they had won, and the cop was looking out for them and stopped them. There was another case, which is quite interesting, where apparently a stripper had saved something like a million dollars on the West Coast. I think it was either in LA or San Francisco, and was relocating to New York to invest in a club. And she had all the money in cash, and she drove it across country, Somehow she got stopped, gave consent to a search. They found a million dollars in cash and they took it. Now, the thing about that is, is I think she got that money back and she had actually paid taxes on that money too. So that was, a, but I mean, it took years, right, to get it back. So you don't want to put yourself in that position. Cashier's check, sticking money in your pockets. I think, you know, I think all that stuff is is pretty good, um, you know, when it comes to bringing cash and being smart about handling cash at the World Series. I also think, you know, possibly coloring up, sticking chips, large denomination chips, if you're going to play in the Rio, in your change pocket. That's what I like to do. Um, I'm also a big proponent of having some cash on me, but not a lot of cash, just in case I'm robbed. Uh, I don't want to get killed because I don't have anything on me. So that's sort of my take on sort of bringing cash to and from uh, Las Vegas and the World Series of Poker.